It's easy to throw together toward the end of your cooking process because you can even have this baking while everyone is sitting down to eat. This is an apple crisp. Let's mix together our dry ingredients for that. Equal parts, flour, brown sugar, and toasted oats. There's a cup of flour, a cup of brown sugar. Now this one, you don't have to be as careful with brown sugar as I was with the flour. Again, because it's, we do want it to be compacted. We want a firm, packed cup of this sugar, brown sugar, yum, yum, yum. Poomph. We've got our toasted oats. These are the kind that only take a few minutes to cook. I'm not gonna worry about leveling off my teaspoon. I, I think a little extra can be very nice. And a little bit of salt. That's a quarter teaspoon. Now what I like to do is mix all of this first before we add our butter. I have melted in my microwave about 45 seconds an entire stick of butter. How's that for naughty? That is what's going to bind this together. Just pour it directly over. This is going to be the crispy topping that's going to go over our apples. So now that this is all mixed together, we can turn our attention to that. Always use a sharp knife. A sharp knife is a safe knife. And notice that I'm holding the knife still and rotating the apple. This is a much safer way to peel fruit. So once you've gone ahead and peeled your apple, you can cut it in half lengthwise and then in half again. And then you've got these nice quarters, which are really easy to core. And once you've got your cored quarters, you can cut them in half and then into thirds. And then we've got all these nice, even little chunks of apple. Now I'm using a wand zester here, which is a super dangerous and very handy kitchen gadget. If you don't have one, just use the smallest setting on your cheese grater. And now uh, we're adding the juice of a half a lemon. The uh, acid in the lemon is really gonna make those apples taste so much better. Mix together first your sugar, flour, cinnamon, and salt, and then toss them with your apples. Now everything is mixed pretty evenly there. You can see that all of the apples look a bit fuzzy because everything has an even coating of it all around it on the outside. And now I'm ladling all of my fruit into my beautiful Pyrex pan. You want to spread that in there nice and evenly. Dot a I use about a half a stick of butter that I dot into the top of it. It helps bind the fruit together. Then we're gonna lay our streusel topping evenly over the top. And then this is gonna be ready to go in the oven. Since everything else that we have today is very rich and buttery, we're gonna have some very light things to accompany it. Some very simple, simple, some very simple steamed broccoli with just olive oil and salt. We've got our nice basket steamer set up for our broccoli. Six and a half minutes in my pot. Then we're gonna salt it a little bit and a little olive oil, a nice fresh counterpoint to all our yummy rich food. And here I've got just a really simple vinaigrette that we're gonna whisk together and drizzle over our greens. Another green thing to eat. It's been three and a half hours, and in my book, the book of Jason, that means that our pork roast is done. <clears throat> One of the wonderful advantages of this dish is you don't need a thermometer, you don't have to poke it, you don't have to, you don't have to do anything except make sure it's in a 350 degree oven for the right amount of time, and it'll be done. Hallelujah. So, let's have a look, shall we? It's beautiful. Let's put it on a platter and see if anyone salutes. Our crisp, as you can tell by the rubble in the kitchen, we have already sat down to eat. But luckily, the crisp is done. So let's get it out of the oven and have a look, see how it is. 
one of my favorite things to go with a crisp. Ooh, ooh, it's perfect. It's perfect. You can hear it. It's still sizzling and talking to me as I spoon it up. The apples are perfectly tender. And you can see it's steaming in its wonderful bowl. It's very rich. We've got a lot of other food, so a nice, sensible little portion of this is going to be perfect. We'll do a little bit of vanilla ice cream on top, and we're good to go. I had this picture out to show you today. Uh, these are my parents on my mom's side, my grandmother and grandfather, the Zenobias. Uh, this recipe is based on her, Evelyn Zenobia, her pot roast. She was a, a little tiny woman with quite a sense of humor and a few ways to trick my grandfather into thinking that she had uh, spent all day working, for example. Put an onion and a potato in the oven and get a little cloth and put a little furniture polish on it and leave it out so that when he got home, he'd go, oh, you've been busy today. You tricked me. Well, he never knew that she tricked him. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for, Mary? What are you thinking about? Who are you thinking about, Mary?